Here is uh, more buzz about bees. The value of insect pollinated crops has been estimated at $15 billion. Tennessee beekeepers have reported up to 70% losses of hives though in recent years. And while researchers try to pinpoint what's wrong and find solutions, all of us can do a little bit to help. Emily Stroud talked to an expert about what plants make the best meals for bees. This is my bee balm. I planted it because bees are attracted to this flower and they really like the nectar. You can see that this particular plant is kind of pitiful and that's disappointing because planting flowers is an easy way to help the bees. We encourage everybody to plant as much as possible for all types of pollinators, but especially for the bees. Uh, my little motto is always to feed the bees so they can help feed us. Jennifer Saruda is an assistant professor of entomology and plant pathology at UT's Institute of Agriculture. She's also the beekeeping specialist for the state of Tennessee with an expertise in honeybees. I help the beekeepers across the state, um, helping them with their management of their hives and making sure that they're as successful as they can be. She helps the beekeepers and the bees help all of us. They move around flowers, collecting nectar and pollen and fertilizing plants that in turn produce food for people and animals. There's an estimate that about one out of every three bites of food that we take has somehow been affected through animal pollination. So they have a huge impact on day to day life. The different bees work in different ways. And so some may be, um, some of the native bees may be better at doing pollination of certain crops on a per visit basis. Uh, but if you don't happen to have those native bees in your areas, uh, one way you can up your pollination is by bringing in uh, colonies of honeybees. And that way you can bring in you know, 50,000 bees in one box. Pest pathogens and pesticides are bad for bees and all types of bees face a challenge of finding food. What we really want people to do is to plant as much as possible for these bees. I try to plant things that are going to be easy and that are not going to need a ton of care from me. And if they come back year after year, whether it be as a perennial or because it's an annual that reseeds themselves, that's fantastic. I like things that are low maintenance and hardy um, and don't need me to babysit them. Here are her easy to grow recommendations for East Tennessee. Planting buckwheat can be really beneficial. It's a relatively cheap seed. It's hardy. Um, you can plant acres and acres for a little bit of money um, and you'll attract both native bees as well as honeybees. Um, another great one is uh, mountain mint. That's the one that can be used in a yard landscape. It's a pretty shrub and attracts all types of bees. And then blanket flower is one that I would um, really recommend because there's just so many different types of bees and pollinators that visit it. It blooms from um, around April until November. I don't have room for buckwheat, but I think I could handle blanket flower, and that's an easy way to help the bees. And planting a variety of flowers is important for bees, different colors and shapes that bloom at different times of the year. But I agree with the experts she interviewed. I like low maintenance. Yeah.